Hey guys, it's Jessica, and today uh, we are going to be playing Scarlet Hollow. It's an incomplete game. We are playing episode one. Um, I found this on Steam, and it's a Kickstarter, so I just kind of wanted to show the Kickstarter page and just give us a little background information on the game itself. So Scarlet Hollow is the horror visual novel I've been waiting for. The artwork is gorgeous and meticulously spooky, and I wish I could go Bigfoot hunting with these characters in real life. The rest of this game can't come soon enough. And that is a review by a horror artist, and I completely agree. The episode one is free to play on Steam, which is where I found the game. And it's a choice-driven horror adventure game and visual novel brought to life by critically acclaimed graphic novelist Abby Howard. Um, so I'm assuming she's done other like horror like genres as far as graphic novels. Uh, this I don't know if this is her first video game or not, but Overall, I've been playing, I pl just finished the first episode, you guys are about to see that playthrough right now, and it was pretty um, cool to play. You know, I liked where the narrative was going, it didn't feel dull at all, um, some of the jokes are a little corny, and some of the stuff is more realistic options to pick, so it's really cool. Apparently your choices do matter and you can also pick traits before you start the game. This will like basically give you different options as far as like for dialogue options. And so I thought that was pretty cool as well. Um, I guess after, you know, because again, we're on the Kickstarter, you know, I guess what she is trying to go for too is her own original ideas for monsters. And I thought that was pretty cool. And you do get to see the monster in the first episode so play it highly recommend it uh i can't wait for the rest of it to come out you know we get these romance options and we get more details overall it's just like a really cool game as far as like if you're into graphic novels and just like you know choice driven games so i can't wait for the rest of it to come out you can also support the kickstarter as well and by so supporting the Kickstarter, here are all the rewards for, I guess, the support. And it ranges from like a dollar, like all the way to six grand. So I don't know if you're, you know, that cool person who wants to give six grand to this Kickstarter. But yeah, pretty exciting. And so here is the, the little thing for the Kickstarter, the little blurb. This is our seventh Kickstarter campaign. All prior campaigns have successfully funded and fulfilled. Well, this is our first video game. Of, okay, so first video game. We believe that the release of our first episode is a sufficient proof of concept for both the quality of the product and the time it will take to deliver it. Episode one took five months from the start of scripting to its final delivery. While we feel responsibly excuse me, reasonably good about a six month per episode release schedule, Delivering a quality product is our highest priority and releases might occasionally be adjusted to reflect that. So, it looks like the next episode we won't be getting for another six months. And so, one of the rewards is, you know, if you pay, obviously, to support it, you can get um, access to those episodes upon release. Otherwise, you will have to wait till the full release in 2023 just a heads up. So if you feel like you might get emotionally attached <laughs> and then be sad because you can't afford it, I get it. I'm starting to feel that way now after I've just finished the game. So yeah, because <laughs> I'm a little bit broke right now as a grad student. You know, it's, it, I, you know, it is what it is. Although I might, I might, give it $10. I mean, it's free and why not if I can get the episodes ahead of time. I just hope to remind myself that I'm going to get them. Anyways, I've talked long enough. Let's just get right into the game and I hope you guys enjoy this playthrough.
that's pretty cool. They give you, um, different genders besides, you know, your binary male, female. That's cool. Shapes unlock additional paths and dialogue options. Okay. Let's see. Powerful build, strong athletic pinnacle fitness, can shotgun a root beer in three seconds. Um, no. <laughs> Mystical, strange and unusual. You see the threads of reality in a way others cannot. Mm -mm. I like that. Street smart, smells BS, also good at BS. No door can hold you. Mm. Keen eye, observant, picks up on vibes, understands others' perspectives. That is definitely. You know a lot of fun facts. Research is your favorite activity, straight A student. <laughs> Hot, attractive, charming people want to either be with you or be you. I don't really feel like that's me. I feel like... Hmm. Well, if this is going to be in the sense of... Oops, someone just texted me. Hmm. Well, I feel like mystical, we might get some weird interactions, so I'm gonna click that one. And then I'm torn between Street Smart and Keen Eye because I feel like that will be effective as far as spotting out shenanigans. Hmm. I'm gonna go with Keen Eye. Alright. Oh, red. Jolt awake as the bus hits a particularly nasty bump. You feel like you'd only just managed to start drifting off, and now here you are, awake again and still exhausted. For a moment, you're hazy on the details of where exactly here is, confusing this bus with the many others that came before it. But as your mind continues to reassert its existence in the waking world, the past few days come back into focus. The long lost cousin, the bad news, the 26 hours of bus rides with countless late night stops and CD depots that felt unsafe even in the middle of the day. You wouldn't normally find yourself traveling like this, but your cousin bought the tickets. The funeral of her mother, your aunt, seemed like something you shouldn't ignore. Even considering your own late mother's rocky relationship with this side of the family. Fortunately, the end of your long journey is in sight. You're almost in Scarlet Hollow. Stranger. So anyways, as I was saying... Oh no, he's still here. He's been sitting next to you for the past five hours, talking at you without pause. You're not even sure he stopped when you started to doze off. At first you thought he was just being friendly, but that was several hours ago. Of one-sided conversation ago. Stranger. I was up in Maryland looking for work, but mostly messing around because I was a dumb teen. And me and my buddies were doing our usual prank stuff, you know, pushing joggers into the harbor. That sort of thing. The fuck? Dude, what the fuck? Yeah, dude, what the fuck is wrong with you? Pushing joggers- <laughs> Well, literal hell. Pushing joggers into the harbor. That's awful. What if they drowned? Heh. <laughs> yeah, I was such a shithead back then, and I'm still a bit of a shithead, but hey. Poe buddies nerfed. Oh god, what a douche. So this girl comes up to us swinging her purse, yelling about how she was going to call the cops or whatever. It was hilarious. She actually hit my friend and he said it hurt a lot. So I guess she really was mad at- mad though. And not just playing. But she kept swinging and she was getting closer and closer to the edge. So soon enough she lost her balance and fell into the harbor all on her own. We didn't even have to push her. We had a good laugh, but we finished- we fished her out and her phone got soaked so she couldn't call the cops on us. 
We wound up hanging out all day. She kind of became my girlfriend after that, and we've been on and off for about a year. So it's pretty serious. How is it serious if it's on and off? Though about five months ago, she tried to break up with me. Like, for real. Jeez. You ever just get so mad you just, like, want to kill somebody? Uh, no. <laughs> Don't get so mad that I want results to murder. At least, you know, like, the fuck? Maybe hurt someone, but not, like, fucking straight up murder someone. If I feel like if I say any look, he might. Uh, I'm just gonna smile and pretend he didn't say that. <sighs> Ugh, I knew you'd get me. We understand each other. Uh, you are a random stranger on the bus. Somebody trying to break your heart that changes a person, makes them want to do things they never thought they'd want to do. I honestly could have killed that woman. He just says it so casually, as if he's already killed somebody. Anyway, she's giving birth to our son. Oh my god, this poor woman has a child with you. <laughs> that means she will never be rid of you. <sighs> so, right now, so I'm trying to get up to Virginia to be there for it. But I don't know if I'm, like, into that stuff, so I might just wind up on a bus to New York or something instead. I've always wanted to go there. Wow. Love your priorities. I mean, do you love her enough to make that work? I mean, you were gonna straight up kill her, so you must feel some sort of passion. Yeah, you were so worked up about the thought of losing her that you wanted to kill her, but now that she's giving birth to a child you created together, you're planning on running off? Like, so backwards. Now nah, he's like, not really paying attention, great. Even if you love her, think about whether that love is strong enough that you'd be able to handle raising a kid together. Think about how your actions are going to impact his life, and whether removing yourself would be better for him in the long run. Like, seriously, you sound like you have some... Like... Shit you gotta work out with? You're gonna straight up kill some? <laughs> yeah, good stuff to think about. Yeah, he don't give a fuck. Anyways, where'd you say you were headed? Oh yeah, like, I'm gonna tell you. Mystical. I'm returning to my ancestral home. My mother fled from her destiny there many years ago, but now that both she and her sister are departed from this world, I can feel it calling me back. And I didn't say where I was going, so. <laughs> the young man anxiously shifts in his seat. For one perceptible moment, it's his turn to feel uncomfortable, or he catches himself and heartily laughs. Oh, you must be talking about Scarlet Hollow, right? Or the Holler, as they call it in the mountains? That's the only other stop until the bus turns around, so if you aren't getting off at my stop, you must be headed up that way. Almost nobody ever goes there. I'm usually alone on the bus by now. Though, actually, I had a couple of buddies who went up there to work in the mine. There's a coal mine up in the holler, you see, and there's always a job listing or two on the boards around here. I've never wanted to do that kind of thing myself. I like my lungs the way they are, thanks. But my buddies got desperate enough to try it. I haven't heard from them in a while, but now that I think about it, I should see if they're on Facebook. See how they're doing up there. I don't say it's Facebook. Hope they didn't die. Haha. <laughs> like, he can't really. I don't know if it's justifying him having dark humor, because he said he's just got straight up murders. That is still kind of like, okay, whatever. He looks back at his phone for once, focus on something other than you. Oh, this is me. It was lovely meeting you. <laughs> Hope you didn't get too bored without me around to talk to. I think I'll be fucking fine. 
feeling that things. Here, I have something for you. This stranger rifles through his pack before presenting you with a dripping bag of peanuts. They're boiled peanuts. I got them at a gas station a few buses back. I noticed you haven't eaten much, so I figured you could use them more than me. How much has he been watching me? Plus, they dripped all over my bag, so I don't want to carry them anymore. Well, the fuck. welcome. And with that, I leave you. Safe travels, friend. And just like that, the stranger is gone. Maybe you can finally get some sleep. Next stop, Scarlet Hollow. End of the line. Almost there. The bus finally comes to a stop. It breaks squealing as it deposits you in front of the Scarlet Hollow bus station. Well, the sign reads bus station, but calling it that feels disingenuous. At best, it's a kiosk. Though for a small town like this, you're amazed there's so much as a road, let alone a bus that drives on it every week. The driver quickly shuts the door behind you and starts the engine, kicking up dust clouds as the bus pulls away, eager to leave you and the place behind. Hey. You instantly recognize the worn young woman from the few public photos on her Facebook page. She's your cousin, Tabitha, and she looks annoyed to be here. Offer her your boil. Condolence. Um, I don't <laughs> think so. It looks like somebody needs a hug. Hey, Tabitha. Give condolences. I'm so sorry for your loss, Tabitha. Yes, great. Thank you. Oh, okay, fuck you too. Let's get back to the estate. I don't want to spend any more time down here than I have to. Your cousin turns and motions to an old BMW parked near the bus kiosk. You follow her clambering into the dusty relic. It doesn't take much driving before the only signs of civilization are the car you're in and the road you're on. Tabitha maintains an icy silence as she focuses on the road. Tip. Dialogue options labeled explored can usually be taken without advancing the story. They can impact relationships and unlock additional story paths, so choose carefully. Hmm. How are you holding up? Fine. Are you sure you're alright? You seem tense. You know you can talk to me, right? I went through something similar when my mom passed. She tenses up even more at the mention of your mom before letting out a heavy sigh. Maybe it's a sore spot for her. You quickly apologize. I'm sorry. I know that's probably not what you're looking to hear right now. Look, I appreciate your concern, but I'm fine, really. Tabitha stares straight ahead, her expression tense and icy. So the funeral. So the funeral, it's on Sunday, right? Yep, like I told you. Need any help planning? If you ever need help with errands or scheduling, feel free to ask. I know this stuff isn't easy. It's actually been fine. Just needed the coffin and somebody to dig a hole. <laughs> Tabitha stares straight ahead, her expression tense and icy. Have we ever actually met before? I'm pretty sure this is the first time, right? Yep. You have your mom to thank for that. Or had, I guess. The 
mystical. I can sense a deep scar. I can sense a deep scar in our bloodline. A gaping maw intent on consuming itself to oblivion. I only hope we can mend it during our time together here. Great. Good for you. Tabitha stares straight ahead, her expression tense and icy. I guess we're both members of the Dead Moms Club now, huh? Your cousin turns to stare at you, an icy hatred in her eyes. Maybe this would have worked to ease the tension if she were somebody else, but she isn't. She turns back to the road, her expression cold and unforgiving. You decide to sit in silence with your cousin as the car eases up the steep mountain road. Jesus. And here it is, the Scarlet Estate, the old family homestead, though it's seen better days. Its crumbling elegance is not lost on you. Someone used to dingy apartments in gray cities. Your mother told you about this place many times before she passed, always with an anger burning underneath her words. The faded majesty you once imagined doesn't quite compare with what's in front of you. A jarring blend of opulence and ruin. As you stare at it perched on the crumbling cliffside, you can't help but feel like it's something that should have been left to a rot a long, long time ago. The stairs look like they're falling apart. As soon as you enter, you're hit with a blast of dusty air. Everything in this room has been here for much longer than you've been alive. Each object cemented in place with layers of dust and cobwebs. You can hear doors creak on their hinges and the aches and moans of ancient floorboards as the house itself sways in the wind. Welcome to our family's humble estate, Tabitha says. Unfortunately, due to the current state of the house, only a few rooms will be safely accessible during your stay. I wouldn't go wandering anywhere else if you value your limbs. The floors have been known to give out. If you know it's good for you, you'll stick to your room, your bathroom, and the kitchen. And hallways, I guess. But only the hallways you need to use to get to those places. I'll show you around so you know where it's safe to walk. You can leave your bags here for the time being. <laughs> you really let this place go, huh? No offense. Tabitha says, Oh, so you're the expert on how to take care of a mansion all of a sudden. It's not as easy as you think, okay? It takes a lot of time and resources. What you see right now is still livable, so mind your own damn business. Let's get this tour over with. Follow me. Put your bags down and follow Tabitha through a long... Oh, you put your bags down and follow Tabitha through a long dusty hallway. She delicately steps over holes and tears in the floor. And you do your best to trace her steps. Kitchen on Wednesdays. A woman from town comes in and does the cleaning. Her name is Janie. I wouldn't recommend socializing with her. She'll talk your ear off. If you need any food, there's fixings for peanut butter and jelly. Don't touch my mac and cheese or my ice cream. Those are off limits. And, oh, and you also, ooh, and you can also access the garden through here. But it's pretty wild, so I wouldn't if you were. Tip. Some explorer prevent you from taking others. Choose carefully. Ah! Mystical. 
feel a wild energy in this room as if the natural world is creeping in to finally reclaim its territory. Tabitha says, Okay, jeez, I get it. You think it's messy. I'll tell Janie to be more thorough this week. But you should know that there's only so much anyone can do with a country house this old. It's always going to be a little grimy and worn, unlike your sleek city apartments. If a little dirt bothers you, you're going to have a rough time this week. Awesome. I love PB&J. How'd you know it was one of my favorites? That smile can't be real. Tabitha says... I didn't, but good for you. <laughs> I might want to eat something other than PB&J this week, though. So is there any somewhere in town where we can get groceries? Tabitha says, Well, aren't you fancy? Yeah, there's a general store. There's also a diner. I usually order my food in bulk online, though, so I wouldn't be going with you. Sweet. Thanks. Cool. Good talk. What if I want ice cream? What if I want ice cream? Then you could buy yourself some at the general store. If you touch my stash, I will know, and there will be consequences. Jesus. Alright, what's next? On the tour. Tabitha says, Bathroom. Follow me. Great. It's been hours since I've gone. As the two of you leave the kitchen, you pass by a tuxedo cat sitting on the countertop. Is that your cat? What's its name? Fru-Fru. Do not try to pet her. If she wants to be pet, she'll let you know, Tabitha says. Leave the cat be. You decide to follow Tabitha's advice. Tabitha says, shall we move on? The bathroom awaits. Once again, follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. Maybe after a few nights, it'll get easier to navigate these spaces. But for the time being, you feel lucky to have not fallen through the floors. Tabitha. Guest bathroom. Not much to show. It's a bathroom. I'll wait outside. Do what you must if you must. It is a nasty, wretched bathroom. Piles of junk sit untouched in the corners of the room, and mystery stains paint the floor. Who exactly uses this bathroom? Guess, says Tabitha. Are you sure this toilet works? Tabitha says, uh, yes, why wouldn't it? The water bill gets paid, therefore the toilet works. Now do your business so we can move on. Ugh. You silently stare at the monumental task in front of you. Never mind. You are not desperate. <laughs> you know, on second thought, I don't think I need to go. Tabitha says, you might as well try since we're here. Is there another bathroom I could use? There's my bathroom and my departed mother's, but this one is the guest bathroom, so you should get used to using it, said Tabitha. Uh, wow. So get up and do your business. 
You lift the toilet seat. Bugs skitter from the bow. That's disgusting. Oh. Youth facilities. The toilet is a toilet. Sure, it would cleaner. But your business needs doing, and this is as good as a place any. You don't. You do what you must and rejoin your cousin out in the hall. Next up, guest bathroom. Last stop on the tour. Follow me, said Tabitha. What a con. You and Tabitha briefly return to the foyer before climbing the stairs and reaching the guest room. The room smells old. Dust, mildew, wood rot, it has it all. A week of sleeping in the place might give you permanent lung damage. Tabitha says, This is where you'll be staying. The linens are fresh. I had Janie wash them last week. I had to endure a half hour rant about her kid to get her to do it, so you better be grateful. The closet is full of old family stuff, so you can't hang your clothes up. But you can use the dresser. It should be empty. I sense a heavy spiritual fog hanging over this room. People have died here, haven't they? I ask. Tabitha says, When? This house is almost 150 years old. Obviously people have died here. What's with all the boxes? I ask. Tabitha says, Old family stuff. Offer to help move the boxes. Do you need help moving them? Tabitha eyes you up and down for a moment. Tabitha says no. <laughs> this room is a nice room. Thank you. Tabitha says, good, you should be honored to say, to say in a historic landmark such as this, I think that's a typo, to say, every piece of furniture in this room is a genuine antique handed down through the family gener for generations. This is not an Ikea bedroom or whatever such nonsense you're used to in the city. Jesus, so judgmental. Who used to sleep here? I ask. Tabitha says, Like I said, this house is almost 150 years old. Many, many people have slept here, and now you'll sleep here, carrying on the fine tradition of bedrooms being slept in. I guess I'll get, I'll start to get settled, I say. Tabitha says, Follow me, I'll take you back to the foyer. So you can collect your belongings. Tabitha says, this concludes our tour. I'm afraid I must return to my duty so you'll have to entertain yourself for the rest of the day. Don't expect to see much of me. Tip, some dialogue options will open additional conversation paths. Some right away and others down the line. Listen, I say. I know I don't know what my mom did when she left, but that has nothing to do with me. You asked me to come here, but you're acting all pissed off that I actually came. Can't we start fresh now that it's just us, I ask? Tabitha says, okay. I'm sorry I've been testy since you've gotten here. You've been fine. I'm just under a lot of pressure right now. Please just stay out of my hair until later, okay? I have work to do. What kind of work do you do, I ask? Tabitha says, I run the coal mine, same as every Scarlet who came before me. Except for you and your mom. 
It requires a lot of time and concentration, so I'd appreciate it if you didn't keep me long. I didn't know we owned a coal mine, I say. Tabitha says, we don't own the coal mine. I own the coal mine. Your mother forfeited any claim to it years ago. Okay, well, can I come and watch, I ask? Tabitha says, what? No, this, the mine is dangerous and running it is difficult. I can't babysit you and do my job. Whatever your thoughts may be on Tabitha's work situation, you decide it's best to keep them to yourself. Is there anything else you'd like to bother me with before I leave, or are we good? Tabitha asks. Are you sure you can't take the day off, I ask? It's a special occasion. Your cousin's in town. Tabitha says, no, some of us have responsibilities. If you think about it, isn't family the greatest responsibility of them all, I ask? Tabitha says, ha, that's rich coming from someone whose mother abandoned us because she didn't want to run the family business. And now here I am, the only person left to manage the estate, and here you are asking to take me away from my duties to hang out with you. I'm going back to work. Stay here, go into town, do whatever you want. Just keep out of trouble, she says. All right, I say. I won't keep you, but we should hang out when you get back. Tabitha says... We'll see. There's a lot that needs to get done this week. Your cousin leaves through the front door. And now it's just you. And you and this sprawling, decrepit estate. Alright. PB and J. You haven't had anything to eat all day. The only things louder than your stomach right now are the creaks and moans of this ancient place. The PB and J sounds exactly... Like what you need to take on the rest of the day. You head to the kitchen. <coughs> Excuse me. You're back in the kitchen ready to craft a beautiful peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's a daunting task given the state of the place, but the aggressive growls of your stomach outweigh your fear of food poisoning. To get started, you'll probably need to find some peanut butter, some jelly, bread, plates, and a knife. Start with the fridge. As you approach the fridge, your eyes catch a note taped to the door reading, Janie, stay out, in all caps. Below it, in separate handwriting, are the other words, okie dokie. You open the fridge, you already feel a deep urge to wash your hands, even though you have yet to touch anything other than the handle. Explore old takeout. Why did you do that? What were you expecting? This takeout container is disgusting beyond words. A liquefied mess, wholly congealed in its styrofoam shell. You can't even tell what it used to be. This substance doesn't just smell bad. It smells ancient. Ugh. I'm gonna go ahead. I would throw it away, but there's a note that says to not touch anything. Uh, for sake, put it back. Your body reacts before you even register what you're doing. Compelled by a deep primal disgust, you shove the container back in the fridge, pushing it into the depths of the shelves and out of your mind. Hopefully you can forget it exists and move on with your life. Take jelly. Reach for one of the unopened jars of grape jelly, carefully checking its expiration date. You breathe a sigh of relief when you realize it's re it's recent. This was either purchased specifically for you, or jelly is one of the few things in this kitchen Tabitha actually uses. All you need now is a plate, a knife, bread, and some peanut butter. 
Better close the fridge and keep looking. So you probably shouldn't, but a part of you has to know all that mayonnaise is. You pick up the jar. It's label flaky, flaking in your hand. It expired ten years ago. Ew. This jar of mayonnaise is old enough to graduate the fifth grade. Best to put it back and forget you ever saw it. Hmm. I don't want to grab it, but I don't want Tabitha to hate me already more than she already does, so we're gonna just close the fridge. You return to the kitchen, closing the fridge behind you. You return to the kitchen, closing the fridge behind you. Yeah. Search the pantry. Tabitha sure loves mac and cheese. Like, craft uh, macaroni and cheese. Funny. Craft with the C. Craft. Jiffy with G. There's a dead mouse. That's just great. Squint in the darkness of the pantry. Behind the molded bread, a single book lies forgotten in a thin layer of dust collected on its cover. You pick it up. You flip to a bookmark page. Both calves, brains, and aspic are unappetizing enough on their own, and you can only imagine how vile the combination of the two would be. What kind of person would call this their favorite food? No wonder your mom ran far, far away from this place. You shut the book and put it back in its place. Let's just take the bread. You pick up one of the non-moldy loaves of bread. Great, one step closer to a satisfying snack. All you need now is a plate, knife, and some peanut butter. Let's take some peanut butter. The king of nut butters and only 3% of each jar is mashed up cockroaches. The king of nutter butters and only 3% of each jar is mashed up cockroaches. The only thing you need now are a plate and a knife. And we don't want to fuck around with her mac and cheese, so let's just close it. Close the pantry. You close the pantry door as best as you can and, and turn back to the rest of the kitchen. The cat hisses as you draw near, but remains firmly in place. This is clearly Frufru's spot on the counter. Now yeah, fuck off. You back away from Frufru, trying not to make any sudden movements. Alright, let's search the cabinets. This cabinet must be where Tabitha keeps the dishwasher, the dishware, and oddly enough, the utensils. Butter knife. So grab a plate and a butter knife. This is the last ingredient you need to make PB and J. Time to get to work. Sam in the mug. It reads, I was blown away at Blowing Rock, North Carolina. I think that's what that means. And see. So your aunt and cousin actually traveled sometimes, even if it was only a few hours from the estate. Maybe you can route your return trip through Blowing Rock might be nice to see the local sites before heading home. I'm in a shot class. It reads, I survived Deb's 50th. Your aunt's name was Pearl Ann, so this wasn't from her 50th. From the few stories you heard from your mom, Pearl Ann wasn't the type to have kitschy friends who gave out themed shot glasses at their birthday parties. Kenai. Maybe it belongs to Janie. You imagine she might need an alcoholic beverage to get through cleaning this place, especially with Tabitha's sour face peering over her shoulder. You reach for the bowl, but as you pull it down, a blend of vinegar and dead moth splashes onto you, immediately staining your shirt. On the back of the bowl is a note that reads, Moth Trap, Don't Not Touch. Shit. Your shirt is now unpleasantly wet. You'll probably change into something clean before you leave the house. Close the cabinet. You close the cabinet and you look back at the rest of the kitchen. Let's make that PB&J. 
Despite the state of this horrendous kitchen, you have successfully combined your three ingredients to make peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Congratulations, you can feed yourself. All that hassle and it took you less than a minute to eat. The rest of the day lies in front of you. Let's check out the garden. This garden was reclaimed by the wilderness long ago. You don't think you want to go out there after all? Or are you even up to date on your tetanus shot? Well, can't explore that further, so... You close the door behind you and you return to the kitchen. Okay. Congratulations! You've eaten and have a full day ahead of you. What do you want to do next? So, I guess settle into a room. Now that you've finally eaten the aches and pains of your journey, have started to sink deep into your bones. You stumble up the stairs to your room, suitcase and towel, eager to unwind before you face the rest of the day. You stand at the entrance to your room. Let's see. Put your spare clothes in the dresser. You drag your suitcase over to the dresser and open the bottom drawer, and a, pos and a, a possum lurks within. It is quite quiet, but angry. Peanut? You hold out your still dripping bag of boiled peas. The possum hisses in disgust, stiffens, and begins to drool, feigning death. You close the door, you might as well leave it be. You open the top drawer next. It's empty, as good a place as you'll find to put your clothes. Based on the state of the house, you wonder if you'd have been better off keeping your clothes in your nice, clean bag, but there's no going back now. Let's check this out. You can see why your cousin said you shouldn't put your clothes in the dresser instead of this closet. There must be decades of family history stacked in here. Of course you're sharing a room with a creepy doll. You'd pick it up to examine it more closely. It reads Property of Alexandra. No need to carry this around with you. Close the closet behind you. You can only imagine how beautiful the garden must have been in its heyday. If you own this place, you'd totally get out there with a shovel and some gardening gloves and whip it into shape. You'd go out and pull weeds, chop trees, carve topiers, and do whatever you needed to return it to its former glory. And once it was all done, you'd sit by the fountain, which of course would have a little goldfish in it, and drink a floral tea while enjoying the bird song. Yeah, you'd definitely do that. Just not right now. <laughs> That's totally me. <laughs> Examine the painting on the wall. This must be an old relative of yours. Very old, judging by the dates on the inscription. You've never heard of her, but you'd barely heard anything about your aunt and cousin until a week ago, so that's not really a surprise. Maybe you could ask Tabitha about this Mary Bell Scarlet the next time you see her. That is, if she's actually in the mood for a conversation. Let's take a nap. You immediately collapse onto the bed. You're tired enough that being alone in a strange new place won't stop you from passing out. Or so you thought. You cough as a small cloud of dust rises up the mattress. These sheets might be fresh, but everything beneath them might have been around to see the dawn of civilization. You try to settle in, but the bed is lumpy in strange places and you feel the springs pressing through the fabric. You might be tired, but you're far from tired enough to get in more than a few minutes of uncomfortable napping. Well, it doesn't seem like there's much else for you to do right now. For for you for you to do here right now. Let's go investigate the forbidden wings of the estate. With Tabitha gone, there's no one stopping you from going into the forbidden wings of the estate. You immediately try the nearest door, only to be impeded by a lock. Well, I guess we do have to go to town. With your cousin gone, there's nothing for you to really do here. You drop your bags off in your room and you head out to explore the town. If you'd have known you'd wind up having to look to walk all the way back to town, you probably would have just asked Tabitha to leave you at the bus stop. Especially with how unhappy she seemed to see you. Only you could wipe the slate between the two of you clean. 
and bury some of the tension. Though maybe her mother's funeral isn't the best time for something like that. Then again, maybe it's the perfect time. It's really pretty out here. See if they can click on anything. Apparently not. Finally, you made it back to town. The holler, as the guy on the bus called it, has probably seen better days. The hall of uh, better days. It still has the feeling of an idyllic country town, but its sidewalks are cracked and many of the storefronts are borrowed or boarded up. Their windows dusty with age. A chill breeze sweeps down the lane and you shudder, suddenly feeling as if you're peering into a grave. Ducky! Gretchen, come back, quit bothering. Sorry about that. Gretchen can be very slippery when she wants to be. She loves to get loose and cause havoc, the stranger says. A pug! She's so cute! I love pugs! The stranger says, thanks! She is cute! Sure, most of her teeth have fallen out, and she's got a couple of weird growths, but for a 17-year-old pug, that's pretty good. She's 17? That's gotta be really old for a dog, right? The stranger says, it sure is! She's about 84 in dog years. I'm hoping she beats the current record holder and makes it to 19. Or better yet, 20. The more time we get together, the better. Isn't that right, Gretch? But where are my manners? Talking to you for this long without introducing myself. I'm Stella. Not often I see a strange face up in the holler. Every now and then there's a new crop of coal folks. But you don't look dusty enough for that. You aren't in town for the funeral, are you? Scarlet funeral? Yep. I just got into town today. Wow, Stella says. I didn't think there would be anyone else coming. Are you staying with Tabby? How is she holding up? I haven't seen her since Pearl Ann passed. Or for a while before that, now that I think about it. Darkness hangs over her. Whatever consumes her goes beyond the death of her mother and poisons her very soul. Stella says, that bad, huh? She's always been a little lost around the edges. I figured she'd probably be having a tough go of things, but that doesn't sound good at all. That or you have a special way with words, Stella says. Are you two friends? I ask. Stella says, I was probably closer than most people have gotten to being able to call her a friend. The school here is really small, so everyone had to at least get along with everyone else. She was a great ahead of me, but everyone knew, knew her, especially since she's a Scarlet. We wound up bonding a bit when we were both in the school production of A Midnight Summer's Dream. I was Puck and she was Mustard Seed. As you might have expected, she was more than a little prickly, but I managed to soften her up a bit in the end. But then she graduated, and that was that. Oh, if you got just got to town, you must be starving. I was just on my way to the din diner for a coffee, and they've got amazing biscuits. My treat. Okay. The pleasant aroma of greasy breakfast food hangs heavy in the air. In contrast with the empty, lifeless atmosphere of the family estate, the diner is filled with comforting din of human life. 
all of which grinds to a sudden halt as the patrons realize that a stranger has entered the establishment. Stella says, hey, this is Tabitha's cousin. She just got into town for the funeral. I'm showing her around. Stella moves to the nearest booth and you quickly follow. There's no need to be nervous, Tabitha says. They won't bite. Keen eye. As you settle into the booth, you can't help but pick up some of the murmurs of conversation around you. Let's explicit in. Stella puts Gretchen pet scratching while you take a look around of the diner. At the counter, two policemen and a woman you assume to be the owner shoot to be the owner shoot side long glances in your direction while whispering to each other. Woman says, that must be Vivian's kid. Never thought we'd actually meet her. Policeman says, looks so much like her. Woman says, oh yes. Those eyes are unmistakable. That haunted look. I always thought it'd go away when she finally got out of this town. But I guess unhappiness was baked into her DNA. Hmm. Least man says. A young mother and her syrup-stained child sit at the table across from you. Child. Mommy, who's that? Young woman, don't stare, Tulip. That must be Miss Tabitha's cousin. Tulip says, oh, so that's why she looks so sad. I would look sad, too, if I had to have Miss Tabitha as a cousin. Do you think Tabitha's cousin is mean, too? Young woman says, I don't know. I'll find out next time I go visit Miss Tabitha. Are you going to finish your pancakes? They're almost cold, sweet pea. And we've got to get home to help Daddy. In the far back corner, a man sits alone at a small table, sipping coffee, reading a paper. Man sighs. <sighs> Why are the strangers who wander into town never gorgeous blonde ladies of an appropriate age? Yeah. Why is it always coal boys, punks, and whippersnappers? Whipsernappers? Whipsernappers? Lastly, a group of coal miners sit hunched around the corner booth, readily scarfing down heaping plates of food. First miner says, What do you think? Another youngin looking for work? Second miner says, No way. Clearly, don't get the stomach for it. That's got to be the boss cousin. The boss's cousin. There's that funeral this week, if I remember right, for old Miss Pearl Ann. Third miner says, May she rot in peace. Jesus. First miner says, Oh, let the lady rest, Lloyd. One shouldn't speak ill of the dead, no matter how foul they were. Especially before they've been such. So much as lain to rest. Third miner says, If you'd been around in her heyday, you'd be speaking ill too, Tommy. Second miner says, He's right. Nastiest woman I've ever met. That Tabitha is a blessing compared to her. Fourth coal miner Curse the whole lot of them. May every scarlet burn in hell. Well, that's enough of that. Hi, hey Stella. I went ahead and fixed you a up a coffee. They gracefully place a cup of a cup of specially brewed coffee in front of Stella. Ah, oh, shucks. Thanks, Avery. Can I have some sugar? Avery says, already taken care of. I know you like your coffee drowned in cream and sugar. And here's some bacon for the little lady. Gretchen sniffs the bacon and digs in. Avery asks me, anything for you? How much is the coffee, I ask? A dollar, but that gets you unlimited refills. Sweet. And you have a biscuit too, since Stella said recommended. Cool. Sweet. I'll have a cup, thanks. And could you throw in a biscuit, too? I hear they're really good. Avery says, best in the country. Best in the county. Avery pours the fragrant brew into the empty mug in front of you. 
They linger after pouring your cup, turning to you nervously. Oh, and I am uh, sorry for your loss. Before you have the chance to respond, they're gone. I'm glad you took my advice. With the biscuit, Stella says, you won't regret it. Anyway, the funeral's not till Sunday, right? That gives you quite a lot of time to slum around. I'm trying to think if there are any cool events going on this weekend. There's always the reading adventure at the library, which is supposed to be for little kids. But I do it every month anyway. Oh, and I'm pretty sure Avery's throwing a party Saturday night. So that's a fun thing to look forward to. And there's the weekly Sunday potluck. That should be right after the funeral too. So it'll be a special occasion. Is the potluck a church thing, I ask? Wouldn't it be weird for me to come if I'm not a member? Stella says, no, no, the Sunday thing is coincidental. It's actually hosted by the library. Um, not too many people go to church around here, if I'm being honest. What the hell? This is strange. North Carolina. A non-religious community, rural south? That's gotta be unusual, I say. Stella says, I know, I know, we must seem like such heathens, but there are plenty of God-fearing people in town. They just aren't. They just aren't biggest fans of the local church. Well, the building's fine, but the pastor's another story. There's just something a little off about the guy. You'll get, you'll get what I mean if you ever meet him. And unfortunately, you probably will. Anyway, those are all the big events I can think of. As for the day-to-day, -day, any idea how you want to kill time for the rest of the week? Something's telling me, I say, this is a loaded question and you've got something in mind. Stella says, hee hee, was I being that obvious? My job means I spend a lot of time in the woods with a camera, and it's always better when someone else is there too. Avery returns before Stella can finish. Biscuit in towel. Avery says, here's your biscuit. Winnie says it's on the house. She sends her condolences. Thanks, Avery. It looks great, I say mystical. You pick up the biscuit. It's delicate and fluffy. It nearly crumbles at your touch. Buttery warmth emanates from its surface. You don't even need to taste it to know that th it is good. <laughs> Divinity given buttery form. Mm, food. You take a bite. It melts in your mouth as if it was nothing but butter suspended in a thin matrix of dough. Truly, this is a perfect biscuit. Whoa, I say. This is a really good biscuit. Wow. Stella says, I'm so glad you like it. Avery lingers at the table for a moment. So, he, er, er, the, so, Avery says, has Stella mentioned she's famous? Ha ha ho, Avery, I'm not famous. Look, if you're not gonna hang her, if you're not gonna, if you're not gonna go around tooting your own horn, you know I'm gonna do it for you, Avery says. Stella sighs. <sighs> I'm a YouTuber. What? Same here, girl. <laughs> what kind of videos do you make? Cool, I say. What kind of videos do you do? Avery says she hunts cryptids. You should really check out her channel, Jessica. It's amazing. Wait. I mean, she did it now. Wait, no, she didn't say my name. Wait. How did you know my name? Avery. Oh, sorry, it's just that most people in town know about you. Sorry, I'm sure that must seem creepy. <laughs> just a little bit. 
Stella says, Ah, well, I guess the cat's out of the bag. The hall is a small place. Everybody knows everybody, and that includes extended family. That's unsettling. Sorry, this is just a little unsettling. Knowing I've been talked about, but not knowing what's been said is weird. Stella says, I'm sure it is, but at least you're, the, you're here now. Yeah, Avery says, and anything Pearl Ann said about you won't hold up to meeting the real you. You can always make a good first impression and wipe slate clean with the whole town. Oh god, what was she saying about me? I say, I ask. Avery says, Aw oh, man, look, I'm sorry I said anything. Stella says, hey, don't worry about it. Pearl Ann was a gossip when do this sort of thing with everyone. Spreading weird little rumors about folks was kind of her trademark. Avery says, Anyways, weren't we in the middle of talking about Stella's illustrious YouTube career? Stella sighs. I guess we were certainly. Avery says, I think the best video to start with would be that river one. Not the lake, but you know, the controversial one. Stella says, Oh yeah, the cat walk Katab Kataba River Run. I didn't expect much out of that outing at the time, but it wound up being my most popular video by far. So the River Runner is a cryptid that's only known from a single sighting. Two Boy Scouts thought they saw something big and weird in the Kataba River. And that's all I had to go on. But then I wound up catching this on camera. Stella pulls out her phone and shows you a clip of something in the river. Some folks said it was a beaver, but if that was the case, it'd be at least twice the size of any beaver I've seen. I also had people saying it was a dog, or even a capybara that must have escaped from a local wildlife sanctuary. I'm still not sure what it was, and I'm the one who saw the thing with my own two eyes. Despite the shaky camera footage, you can clearly make out the shape of the creature's head and its relative body proportions. You're pretty sure that it's a mountain lion. That's a mountain lion. Can't you see its little pretty ears? Stella says, no, no way. It's absolutely not a mountain lion. There are no mountain lions this far east. I did a whole video on the Appalachian mountain lion myth and found Jack Squat. And there's no reason one would be swimming in the river like this. They're not fans of water. And the body is too long. No way. Avery says, personally, I'm a fan of the Capybara theory. Sure, it's not like any local sanctuaries are missing one, but there are always people keeping exotic animals as pets. Kind of a sewer gator type situation. Stella says, haha, exactly. Some exotic pet owner set it free, and now it will forever roam the Catawba. Confusing Boy Scouts and YouTube commentator commenters for years to come. So speaking of things to do around town, I was actually planning on filming this week this week's video tonight. I was wondering if maybe you'd want to come along. It's a pretty easy one this week, and we wouldn't have to camp anywhere. I'm gonna go after the Avery says wait, no spoilers. Stella says, Oops, sorry, Avery. It's okay, Avery says. I should probably get back to it instead of standing around chatting with friends. See y'all around. Now that the coast is clear, Stella says, I'm going after Skunky. What's a skunky, if I ask? Stella says, it's like Bigfoot, but smellier. Most skunk ape sightings are from Florida. But while I was doing research for last week's video, I came across a report where a lady from the town over claimed to have seen one on her deck playing a tug of war with her dog. And as I leave no stone unturned, I decided it was worth investigating. So what do you say? You want to tag along? Hold the camera for a while while I narrate against a darkening sky, that sort of thing?
that depends. Will Gretchen be there, I ask? Stella says, of course. It's actually been a while since I've had anyone but Gretchen out there with me. Say no more, I say. I'm in. Stella says, this is going to be a lot of fun. I actually started the channel with a couple of buddies of mine back in middle school. So it'll be like a blast from the past. Me and Kanika and Reese running around in the woods, flipping over rocks and bothering salamanders. Our videos were terrible. But we had a lot of fun, and that's all that mattered to us. You know, that gets me thinking. I wonder if they'd be down to come along with us, get the ga old gang back together. Though I guess Kanika has to close out the general store tonight, so I'm pretty sure she's a no-go. But Reese, I think there's a decent chance we could get him to come out of his hidey hole. If he's up for it. Do you mind if I make a quick call? Stella pulls out her phone and dials it, waiting while it rings. Reese, dude! What's up, Stella asks. Feels like it's been forever. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you want me to come by or...? Okay, if you're really sure. But if you change your mind... Oh, I was just calling to ask if you wanted to come out to the woods tonight. I know somebody cool in town today. She's Tabitha's cousin. I know, yeah, just here for the week. Anyway, we're going out to look for skate skunk gate. We could take the easier trails if that would help. Dang, man. That sounds awful. I hope you take it easy tonight. I'll swing by sometime this week and we can have a more low-key hang. How's that? Haha, <laughs> yeah, I'll bring her. Talk to you soon. Bye, bud. Looks like it's just you and me, pal. Did he ask you to bring me to his house? Why, I ask. Stella says, He's excited to meet you, of course. I think you'll find most folks in town are. Is he okay, I ask. He's not feeling well, that's all. He's had a lot going on in the past, gosh, ten years or so. But I feel like it's gotten a lot worse recently. I can't remember the last time I saw him leave his house. Oh well, it's not my place to talk about. Really. I just got a little excited thinking about having him along again. He's hilarious. You'd love him. We should swing by his place sometime this week. That'd be nice. I'd love to meet your friends, I say. Stella says, awesome. I'll make it happen. He's definitely the trickier one to meet. Kanika is much easier to track down, since she's at the general store basically every day. But friendships can wait. We've got a skunk ape to hunt. So we should probably head out if we want to make it up to the mountain before it's too dark. Come on, let's blow this popsicle stand. You pause before getting up. Maybe it's time to make a good first impression. After all, it seems everyone in town has heard awful things about you from your now-deceased aunt. You reach into your pocket and pull out a single crumpled bill and a quarter. As long as you don't get sick of peanut butter and jelly, your meals will be free while you're here. Share the wealth while you got it, you think to yourself. You leave the money on the table and follow Stella out of the diner. It had been very cold when you first arrived in town, but as the sun dips closer and closer to the horizon, a chill descends upon the hollow. You see your situation with renewed clarity. You're in a new place, far from civilization, and the people you know- oh, no! Oh man. You feel a mystical, well, sense of foreboding. You feel an overwhelming sense of foreboding, which seems only natural considering where you are. Your instinct screams at you to leave, but at the same time you're curious to see what the night has in store for you. You decide to go with the flow to keep putting one foot in front of the other and to not dwell too much on the strange feeling. Stella says, Gotta love this brisk fall weather. This past summer was the hottest on record since last year at least. 
You know how it is these days. Each summer is the hottest yet until the next summer, which always finds a way to be so much worse. It's just nice to feel a chill in the air and to see the leaves change like normalcy is restored if only for a moment. Sorry if that was a bit of a bummer. We should talk about something more fun like skunk apes. What's the weirdest thing you've seen in these woods? I ask, other than anything cryptid related, of course. Oh gosh, Stella says, that's a good one. Let me think. Well, there's always the deer I saw stealing baby birds out of a nest and eating them. That was pretty messed up. But I think most people know about that these days. I've seen tons of videos of other deer doing it, so I'm not sure if it counts as weird anymore. Oh, Tetanus Lake, that's definitely the weirdest. It was a five foot deep, 30 foot wide pile of old cans and bottles and assorted garbage with grass trees growing on it, so you could barely tell it was there until you stepped on it. It was practically solid ground with how much it had been compressed, but you could still fall through if you weren't careful, hence the name. Better be on your shots. Better be up on your shots if you want to mess around in there. It was all it was all the, it was all stuff from the 50s too which was super neat. I salvaged a few bottles that I keep on my dresser as a little souvenir. Are you really expecting to find anything out here? What are the chances we actually run into Skunk Ape in just one night of filming? That's fair, Stella says. We are hunting a creature that stayed behind from humans long enough to gain a mythic reputation. What are the odds of something like that popping out to star on my little YouTube channel? But hey, there's the chance. The chances are never zero, right? Do you ever hunt things that aren't cryptids, I ask? You know, like ghosts, humans, werewolves, that sort of thing. Stella says... Yeah, for sure. I used to go after all sorts of spooky stuff. I never had much luck, though, especially when it came to ghosts. Back when I first started doing solo videos, I'd go into all sorts of old abandoned buildings, hoping I'd stumble across some sort of activity. But nothing ever happened. It was always just me and my camera in an old house getting worked up over a gust of wind or a creaking floorboard. When all said and done, I've just been a lot luckier with cryptids. I want to believe in ghosts so bad, and I can't rule out the possibility that there really are true hauntings out there. But if there are, I sure as heck haven't seen any myself. Werewolves? I kind of lump in with cryptids. I'd be shocked if there actually were people out there who turned into animals, but werewolf lore lines up pretty well with the great beast genre of cryptid. As for demons, I don't know. I honestly don't even want to consider the possibility that they exist, because if they really are out there, geez, a lot of folks are doomed to an eternity of flames. So let's hope all that's just bunk, am I right? What do you think about aliens, I ask? Stella says, Don't even get me started. Did you see those UFO videos the government's declassified? Aliens are definitely real. And they have absolutely visited Earth. Like, I believe in aliens way more than I believe in cryptids. You don't see me hunting aliens out here because we know they're real. I say... There exists things beyond our realm, but I wouldn't call them aliens. Everything that exists in the universe is cut from the same cloth, one way or another. To call something an alien is to imply that it is something else, something that doesn't belong. Stella laughs, whoa! <laughs> You've got to meet my friend Kanika's mom. You two would get along. Has anything bad ever happened on these hikes? You know, just curious, I ask. 
Priscilla says, hmm, let me think. There was the one time in earlier high school when Reese fell down a cliff. But he was fine. We had some folks from town rig up a pulley to get him out of the ravine. And his leg only took a couple of months to heal. All in all, not too bad. Though I guess there was also that time I was out here alone and kind of got stuck in a cave. I was getting great footage of what I thought was a family of wampus cats. But I wasn't able to wiggle my way back out. Turns out that the wampus cats were actually skunks who were very very much did not appreciate me blocking the entrance to their hidey hole. And, instead of running for help, Gretchen just sat outside, bored to tears. Glassy, she is not. It took about an hour to get loose, which was pretty intense, but a few tomato juice baths later, I was right as rain, so it could have been a lot worse. Oh, and there was a time I accidentally stumbled onto Old Duke's property and nearly got my head shot off. But that happens to everybody sooner or later. I'd barely count it. So yeah, these hikes aren't all that dangerous, all things considered. Did you hear that? Still asks. Well, calm down, Gretchen, you old mutt. A random stranger approaches. Same to you, Stella. You always jumping at nothing, girl. Stella says, phew. Sorry for being jumpy, Duke. I thought you were... Duke says, some creature of darkness snagged, girly. Just old Duke. Now what the hell are you looking for way out here? Skunk ape, Stella says. Duke says, sorry I asked. And who's this you've been suckered into coming with you? Wait a tick. You aren't. Is that... Stella says, yep. Duke says, I see. Welcome to the holler. My condolences keep you in my prayers. Another strange stranger. Another opportunity for a salty introduction. You once again remember the dripping bag of boiled peanuts you have on your person, and you briefly consider offering them to Duke before realizing that it would probably be f more of an insult than anything. You keep them hidden away. Now both of y'all head back into town, you hear? It's best you steer well clear of this area tonight, Duke says. I'm out dealing with my own critter and won't be too appreciative of a couple of fools with a camera scare away this more sensitive wildlife. Stella asks, what are you hunting tonight? Something tall and hairy? Something musky? You see anything like that recently? Something musky? You see anything like that recently? Duke says, wouldn't you like to know? You could never, you never could stay in your business cell, Richmond. Put that damn camera down. Stella says, aw, come on, Duke. Maybe I could help out. I'm pretty good at tracking. You know I learned from the best. Duke says that you did. But I have yet to see a shred of proof that you listen to any of it. The way you tromp around the woods at night yelling about ch chunkabungas and what have you. Something's been getting at my kid chickens. I've lost three this week and can't afford to lose any more than that. Stella says, I'm so sorry to hear that. But, uh, I wonder if Skunk Ape has a taste for chicken. Duke says, now you see, this is why I don't come to you about things. It ain't no Skunk Ape, whatever the hell that is. I know exactly what this is, but I know you won't believe me if I tell you. Stella says, oh Duke, you don't think it's... Duke says, I do, actually. It's those damn mountain lions. They're out there, Stella. I don't care what your little investigation turned up. You haven't been out in these woods as long as I have. Those sons of bitches are sneaky. Of course you wouldn't find any in one night of tracking. And I know for a fact that it's what's been getting at my chickens. Couldn't... It couldn't be anything else. Stella says, I'm telling you, man. Mountain lions are extinct in these parts. There hasn't been an actual sighting since the 1990s, and even those were iffy. Duke says, I can't believe you go out there on your YouTube saying some river monster spotted by a couple. School-age boy scouts has been 100% confirmed, yet Appalachian cougars are some kind of far-fetched fantasy made up by geezers like me. You made me look like a fool. 
I read those comments people were posting on your video. They were calling me all kinds of names just for seeing things with my own eyes that I know to be true. I'm sorry, Duke, Stella says. I didn't mean to sick anybody on you. I just don't think it's plausible. Duke says, you'll eat those words when I come carrying a mountain lion corpse out of those woods at dawn. And if you too don't want to face a full of buckshot, I suggest you run home and stay out of the woods tonight. I say, I don't think this ends well for you. Duke asks, Ugh. How would you know? I go hunting in these woods all the time. Night, day, possums, bears, it doesn't make a difference. Even a mountain lion wouldn't stand a chance against the ingenuity of a man here. Unless it's a mountain lion, Stella says. Duke says, oh, don't you get started again. If your daddy could hear you now going on about ghouls and goblins using what he taught you to run around these woods like some kind of paranormal investigator. Do you want that to be his legacy, girl? And besides, you know my boy Bo and me are headed down to the state fair to show off Big Betty this week. We'll be gone days. And the chicken coop might as well have a big ol' you can eat sign on it if I don't nip this in the bud tonight. You know how I feel about my chicken. I couldn't take it if I lost any more of poor little ladies. Stella says, And you know I have to put a video up by tomorrow evening. If I miss an update, I might lose my new sponsor. Who knows what that will mean for my career. One of us is going to die tonight, I say. I can feel it. Duke says, Now what's that supposed to mean? Are you trying to threaten me? I don't know, I say. It's just the word feeling. A weird, bad feeling. Stella says, whoa, are you psychic or something? Ask again later. Oh, right, right, right. Stella says, when you're in a more private place, I get you. Ah, oh, hush, both of you, Duke says. You're just trying to unsettle me, so I'll let you go off into the woods to film your little video. Um, Stella says, um... Sky, I think you freaked Duke out enough for one evening. Maybe you should. we should leave the poor man to his wild goose chase. Duke says, I'm not freaked out by your friend's theatrics, but if it gets you out of my hair, sure. I'm greatly disturbed. Now run along and stay out of trouble. As you and Stella turn, return to the trail, she carefully looks back at the back the way you came. Stella says, okay, the coast is clear. There's no way we're letting Duke edge us out that easy. Come on, I know a trail that'll get, let us get around him. The trail's just up ahead, Stella. Let's go. Alright, Stella says. This looks like a good shot. Mind holding the camera? She hands you the camera and takes position. Ahem. Stella says. As night falls, my new assistant, Mysterious Jessica, and I find ourselves on a high hill in the Blue Ridge Mountains, where we'll be, we'll begin our hunt for the elusive yet pungent skunk ape. Though mostly encountered in Florida, this possible relative of Bigfoot, this possible relative of Bigfoot has been spotted all along the southeastern edge of the United States, including right in this very county. Here's hoping we get a glimpse tonight. We'll check back once we're on the trail. Until then, stay searching, Stellars. I can take that camera off from your hands for now. We'll be able to get we'll be able to start tracking scenes once the sun sets all the way. 
Stella says. In the meantime, we get to take in all the beautiful scenery. It's gorgeous out here, don't you think? There's something wrong in the air, I say. It feels oppressive. Dark. Hmm. Stella says, you don't think to mean stinky, do you? Do you think you're smelling skunky? No, no, no. I say, more like a, a storm is coming. Stella says, don't worry, I checked the weather this morning and we're in for a beautiful, cloudless night. It really is the perfect night time for a hike. Unless you mean a metaphorical storm. I don't think weather radars pick up on those. But either way, my gut usually warns me if I'm going to run into trouble, and I feel a-okay. You're quiet for a moment with Stella. Is broken by a loud percussive snort. Did you hear that, Stella asked. That's the sound deer make when they want to warn the rest of their herd about big scary predators like us. Let's go check it out. As you and Stella hear the footfalls, footfalls of animals retreating into the woods, she reaches her for a flashlight. Let's talk. Single deer remains behind. Staring down the light of Stella's flashlight while Gretchen whines and pulls at her harness. And then it's gone. Jeez, Gretchen, calm down. You're gonna hurt yourself, Stella says. She cannot handle deer. When she gets like this, I usually have to pick her up and hold her. She has a bad habit of slipping her harness when she wants to go after something. You're too much of a potato. And they don't make harnesses to fit potatoes, do they? There was something wrong with that deer, I say. Did you see its face? Stella says, now that you mention it, there was something a little off. I bet it was absence. Maybe a tumor. It's not like wild animals can get those taken care of, so they just get bigger and bigger. Poor thing. But there's not much we can do about it. Why do you bring Gretchen out here with you, I ask. She doesn't seem like the safest choice for a hiking companion. I actually find her to be quite the opposite, Stella says. Sure, she wants to chase stuff, but I usually let her when I'm not one of, on one of my cryptid hunts, so I can't hold that against her. I'm just happy she's still so feisty, even at her age. Pugs aren't exactly known for their good health, but here she is running around in the woods at 17. I feel like the fresh mountain air and exercise have helped a lot in that regard. You defy the laws of nature, don't you, Gretch? You remain silent. Stella asks, hey, are you hungry? Now seems like a great time to take a snack break. As you settle down, Stella breaks open a bag of assorted snacks. You grab a handful of sesame sticks. Ah, the one snack I didn't make myself. I was hoping to wow you with my cooking skills. But I guess that I'll have to wait for some other time. Nevertheless, a delightfully tasty choice. The chips of the hiking trail. Some would say chips are the chips of the hiking trail. But only a fool would bring such a delicate, space-consuming snack in their pack when that space could fit another bottle of water or more snacks. You and Stella settle down on an overlook, snacks in hand, as quiet as the sounds of the evening wildlife wash over you. Stella says, so, tell me what it's like in Maxville. Do you have a house, an apartment? Do you live with family, roommates, pets? Tell me what it's like to be Jessica.
I live alone in a dingy studio apartment. And I love it. It's a little cramped. The lights flicker. The toilet is constantly getting backed up because the landlady upstairs keeps flushing her cat litter. Her cat's litter. It smells like cigarettes for some reason, but it's mine. I mean, technically, I guess it's the landlady's, but I don't think... I don't have to share it with anybody. It's a mess, but it's my mess, and I wouldn't have it any other way, I say. Stella says, you know, that's a great way to look at things. I can't imagine what it would be like to share your place with people you don't know. Speaking of, it's got to be wild staying with Tabby, for both of you. So what do you do for a living? I'm a teacher, I say. I'm in one of those have your debt forgiven in 10 years programs right now, so I won't be in the best financial position for the next decade. Gosh, that's a long time. The kids I teach now will be graduating high school. A teacher, Stella says. That's such a valuable thing to, to be doing with your life. I love being able to pass on what I learned to the next generation and learned about TikTok and Roblox girlfriends from them, I say. The low pay doesn't even really matter to me. I wouldn't trade this for anything. A crisp breeze passes over you. What about you? What's your living situation, I ask. Gretchen and I live in a little house just outside of town, Stella says. It's actually the house I grew up in. So it has a lot of pleasant memories attached to it, and I'm glad I could keep it in the family. My great-great-grandfather built that house. He must have done a great job because it's just as sturdy as it's ever been. Keeping the house and the family, I ask, is it just you there? Stella says, yeah, it's just me and Gretchen. My parents died a few years back, but it's okay. I've done my mourning. Life goes on, and we still get to live in our beautiful family home, just me and Gretchen. It could be a lot worse. What were they like? Did you get along, I ask. Stella says, they were amazing. Two of the nicest people you'd ever meet, and interesting too. My dad was a bit of a regional legend among hunters and trappers. He was always out in the woods on the trail of something, and we certainly had some interesting dinners because of him. He had to learn how to fend for himself, you see, since his family didn't have much growing up. So he learned how to hunt and trap and got damn good at it. He always made sure I had food and that I knew how to get it if I ever found myself too far from a grocery store. I could make us pretty good salad with what's just in the clearing if I had to, though it wouldn't exactly taste great. As for my mom, she was a saint. She was a local vet, the lady all the farms in the county knew to call her if their animals were in need of something. She was as smart as a whip, strong to boot. Turns out pulling calves out of 1,600 pound cows all day is a great way to build muscle. But she was gentle too. Even the smallest mouse will get the proper care in her hands. I'm sure she's most of the reason Gretchen here is one of the most. Well, is Gretchen here is the, one of the oldest dogs I've ever met. So yeah, those are my parents. Whoa, Stella says. Stella immediately packs her bag and slings it over her shoulder. Sally me packs back. I could hear all sorts of wildlife just a second ago, and now it's quiet, I say. So it says you're right, and whatever made this sound is close. Here, hold Gretchen's leash for me, and let's check this out. You and Stella inch towards the tree line as she shines her flashlight into the brush. As you approach a series of weak clucks from a nearby bush, maybe Duke's birds weren't. The 
what the what the hell was that? Stella says, hold on, I gotta play that back. Holy shit. I'm guessing it must be maybe two, three feet tall? Doesn't look hairy either, so I think we can rule out Skunky. But whatever it is, it has one of Duke's chickens. It looks like it's headed north. Let's go after it. We follow Stella as she sprints into the unknown. Gretchen excitedly pulling you along by her leash. Oof. Are you okay? I ask. Haha, <laughs> yeah, Stella says. I'm alright, just tripped over something weird. Oh no, that poor thing. It must have been one of Duke's. Oh Jesus, it's still alive. You move towards Stella to get a closer look at the chicken. Don't let Gretchen too close. She'll try to take a bite if you don't stop her. You hold Gretchen's leash close to your chest. She seems nervous, squirming slightly against her harness. Examine the head. Its poor little chicken eyes look up, blaze at you, but still rolling around in their sockets with unfortunate life. Looks like this is what Stella slipped on. The wing is barely still attached, but that seems to be the least of the chicken's concern. Oh god, at first you thought it might have been a tumor, but this is something else. The skin is stretched taut, the growth pulsing beneath. you looking more closely at the growth, you think you can see something squirming inside. Having investigated to your heart's content, you turn away to Stella to give Stella room to film. Um, <laughs> Stella says, It seems we found one of Duke's chickens, folks, and she's not looking good. I'm hesitant to speculate, but she's definitely... She definitely seems to have some sort of growth under her skin. Could be a tumor. Could be something else. Either way, I don't think there's much that can be done for her at this point. Jeez. I'm gonna have to put up some massive content warnings for this video. Hey, do you hear that? What in the Sam Hill are you two doing? Didn't I tell you to? Duke says. But, but, Birdie? Oh, Birdie. What's wrong, darling? Good God. Did y'all see what did this to her? No, but I'm pretty sure we didn't see whatever happens to your bird, but I think we can hear them right now, I say. Well, don't tell me you're all caught up in Stella's nonsense, Duke says. Stella, Duke, Stella says, Duke, I'm so sorry, we're on a trail when we found her like this. Duke says, put that camera away for God's sake, girl, I don't want to be in another of your videos. No one needs to see me like this. No one needs to see Birdie like this. You wouldn't put her online, would you? Not when she's like this, all swollen and hurt, Duke says. Stella says, Duke, did you hear what Jessica said? I think they're coming closer. Duke says, come out, you sons of bitches. Duke, don't shoot them, Stella says. We have no idea what'll happen. Duke says, you hear that, Stella? That ain't the sound of something peace-like. Whatever these things are, they'll pay for what they did to my girls. Come on, whatever your name is, grab that flashlight and help me line up a good shot. As the creatures in the tree line grow louder and more numerous, Gretchen violently strains against her harness. You dive forward and scoop Gretchen into your arms just before she manages to wriggle out of her harness. 
God damn it, Duke says. <gasps> you hear a body hit the ground and then quiet as the chaos fades and the sounds of nature creep back in. Gretchen? Jessica? Duke? Are you alright? Still asks. I warned you too, something terrible was going to happen, I say. Woe was me, postmodern Cassandra. Ha, huh, I guess you did, Still says. Gretchen whines and shakes in your arms. Gretchen, Still says. Here, I'll take her, my poor little pup. Thanks for watching out for her. D Duke, are you sure you're okay? Oh my god, Sil says. Oh my god, Duke, holy shit. What did we do? What do we do now? What the hell are we supposed to do? Stand in silence. You've seen dead people before, but never like this. And those things are still out there. Stella says, Yeah. This is a lot. We're in way over our heads. Let me just check the camera real quick. Christ, this footage is so dark and shaky. Ugh, I hate to say it, but people need to know what happened here, Jessica. Duke's family deserves closure. Other people deserve what knows what happened here. We need more footage. Come on, let's go after them before we lose our chance. Are you nuts? I say a man is dead, Stella. I... Yeah, you're right, Stella says. Let's head back and call the police. My phone should get reception once we're back in the main road. As you and Stella quickly make your way back through the woods, the unearthly whispers of creatures unknown once again surround you. Stella, I say. I know, we just have to keep pushing forward, Stella says. We're almost there. As you and Stella reach the main road and the whispers fade back into the sounds of nature. It sounds like they've stopped following us, Stella says. I should get reception now that we're back on the main road. Let me find my phone so I can call the sheriff. You feel a buzz in your pocket. Six missed calls from Tabitha and 13 text messages. <laughs> you try and call Tabitha, but it goes straight to voicemail. You text Tabitha back and let her know you're okay. Your message sits unread. <sighs> I think I'm in trouble. There's lots of texts and missed calls from you know who I say. Stella says maybe Tabby's just worried about you. But first things first, let's call the police. Stella pulls out her phone and dials. Hello, Earl? It's Stella Richmond. I'm up on the mountain, um... The As... As... As gonna trail. Duke is dead, Earl. Shotgun. It happened right in front of us. There's... There's something in the woods. You've gotta hurry. Okay. Okay, yeah. Are they really gone? Yeah, I think we're okay, but hurry. Jesus. Earl, who's going to tell Bo? I guess now we wait. I guess now we wait. It takes a little while, but eventually a patrol car arrives on the scene. Out of it walk two officers, Sheriff Hugby, a friendly older man, and Deputy Franklin, a serious man wearing sunglasses, despite it being the middle of the night. What a douchebag. See right there, Stella says, a thing jumps out of the woods and the shotgun goes off. What in the Sam Hills, Sheriff Earl says. What is that, some kind of Pillsbury Doughboy? 
Deputy Franklin says, could have been a mani naked maniac. No, no, Stella says, there was, there was more than one. They chased us through the woods. Whatever they are, they aren't human. And they killed Duke. Uh-huh, Deputy Franklin says. Now we're going to have to confiscate this camera, Miss Richmond. If you don't mind, this is evidence. But I... Okay, Stella says. Let me just turn it off to save the battery. You notice Stella pop something out of the camera and slide it up her sleeve. Here you go, Deputy Franklin, Stella says. We appreciate your compliance with the law, Deputy Franklin says. We'll get a team out in the morning to retrieve the body, but for now, Sheriff Hugby and I... Please, call me Earl, Sheriff Earl says. Earl and I, Deputy Franklin says, will escort you. And who are you exactly? That's Jessica, Stella says. She came into town for the funeral. Jessica, as in... You say nothing. You'll have to pardon my surprise. We just didn't think you'd show, Sheriff Earl says. Deputy Franklin says, we'll escort you both back to town. If there's a naked maniac on the loose. It's best you don't walk back on your own. Stella says, it wasn't a... Never mind. Why aren't you going out there tonight? There's a dead body in the woods. Those things out there could attack someone else. Sheriff Earl says, well, it ain't exactly like old Duke's going anywhere at this point. He'd still be out there in the morning. What kind of fucking police work? Are you fucking kidding me? Wow. Deputy Franklin says, We only have a skeleton crew at the moment. Monday nights are Deputy Derrickson's bowling nights, Sheriff Earl says. Deputy Franklin says, We'll be on alert for any more reports of naked maniacs, but retrieving Duke will just have to wait. Now, if you'd kindly step into the vehicle, we can return you safely to your home. Stella sighs. <sighs> okay, thank you. You can ride up with me, little lady, Sheriff Earl says. That is, if your mama permits it. Ugh. Stella says, ha ha, sure, Earl, you can hold Gretchen on the way back to town. You two stay out of trouble, Deputy Franklin says. We'll have this all sorted out in the morning. Just get a good night's sleep. And you, whatever your name was. <laughs> Jessica, sure. You're in town for the funeral. Good. Don't you go leaving before then. I imagine we'll need to ask you a few questions about everything you've seen tonight, Deputy Franklin says. Stella, keep an eye on her for us. Make sure she doesn't get into any more trouble. Y'all have a good night now. Bye-bye, Gretchy, Sheriff Earl says, and y'all have a lovely evening. If any bugaboos give you trouble, you know how to get in touch. And here you are, back in town, away from the woods, with no one but Stella in sight. How are you holding up, I ask. How am I holding up, Stella says. I mean, I'm not great, but I'm more worried about you. I can't believe they just implied that you're a suspect, even after we showed them all that footage. But it's okay. I'm not going to let anything bad happen to you. I was there. I filmed the whole thing. At the very least, it'll never hold up in court. And it won't get to the point either, because we're going to do a little investigating of our own. We've got to find out more about those things. If we can get clearer footage, or better yet, trap one of them, there's no way they can blame you for what happened. The library doesn't open for a while, but I've read every book on cryptids that ha they have. And never came across anything like this. Hmm. There is someone in town who might have some useful information. Her place isn't far. We should head over now before it gets any later.
I should probably check it on Tabitha. My friend's place is on the way back, and stopping by shouldn't take long, Stella says. You sure you don't want to stop in first? I know I wouldn't want to head up that mountain road by myself after everything that's happened tonight. When you put it like that, I say, sure, let's do it. Awesome, let's go. The general store. This must be where Stella's friend Kanika lives. I hope she's still awake, Stella says. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot a shadowy figure staring at you from across the road. You didn't hear it approach. Stella, I say, I think someone's watching us. She turns to look. Just go. Stella says, Jesus. Welcome home. Whoever this is, its presence has chilled you to your soul. Before you respond, the door behind you swings open. A middle-aged woman stands in the entryway. Go home, Wayne. I can't help you tonight. You look back and the figure is already gone, disappeared into the shadows of the night. I'm sorry about that, Stella says. Some people just can't be helped. Er, Stella doesn't say that, sorry. I'm sorry about that, Stella. Some people just can't be helped, the woman says. What brings you out here so late? And who is this? Stella says, Mrs. Forsyth. This is Jessica. Hi, Miss Forsyth. This is Jessica. Is it okay if we come in? You and Mrs. Forsyth briefly lock eyes. So blinding and overpowering is her aura that just looking at her feels like staring directly into the sun. Her gaze pierces entirely through you, and in that moment you feel wholly known. And then the moment passes, and you only see the middle-aged woman before you. Of course, of course, you're in luck, Mrs. Forsyth says. I just put on water for hibiscus tea. And for goodness sake, you can call me Sybil. You're an adult now, after all. Welcome to my little nook. It's nice to finally meet you, Jessica. I was so sorry to hear about your mother. Vivian was such a lovely soul. And she's been sorely missed in the holler. And now poor Pearl Ann is gone as well, Sybil says. Do let me know if there's anything you need while you're in town. was that outside, I ask. Just a very sick man. Sybil says, you don't need to be worried about him. You knew my mom, I ask. Sybil says, of course, dear. She was a good friend of mine for many years. She was such a lovely woman. You should come by sometime. I can delight you with some unsavory tales of her youth. How did you know that she died, I asked. Oh, Pearl Ann was a chatty woman. Not much went on that I wouldn't get an earful of, bless her heart. I never met Pearl Ann, I say. You don't have to pass on your condolences to me. I have no feelings about the woman, I say. Ha, Sybil says. That's fair, child, but it seemed like the right thing to do. We need your help, I say. Ah, yes, Sybil says. I suppose pleasantries can wait for another time. What's got you here so late? You seem troubled. You know about weird stuff, right? Stella asks. Unexplainable stuff? I'm not so sure I follow, dear, Sybil says. I know which oils to use for which aches. I know a bit about the classical spiritualism. Just what sort of unexplainable things are you talking about? Duke was killed tonight, Stella says, by something in the woods. Oh my lord, Sybil says. Have you contacted the police? Yes. They didn't take it very seriously, Stella says. They're not even looking for the body until tomorrow. Those things out there. I don't even know how to describe them. Sybil says, I can't say I know much about local wildlife. My daughter has always had a brighter gift for nature than I. This wasn't... 
This wasn't the local wildlife, Mrs. Forsyth, Stella says. Here, I can show you. Stella pulls out the card she swiped from her camera and pops it into her phone. I wasn't about to just let the police hold on to this, at least not before we had a chance to make a copy. Smooth, I say. The cops wouldn't know what to do with that footage anyway. Imagine if they accidentally erased it, I say. Exactly, Stella says. I'll give it to them if they ask again, but for now we can examine the footage for ourselves. Where was this? Sybil asks. Up in the mountains, to the north northwest, Stella says. Sybil says, within the town limits? Stella says, yes. I see, Sybil says. Is there a way to make the video bigger and louder if you can, she asks. Stella says, I need to plug the memory card into your computer. I can go back and get mine. Ooh. I need to plug the memory card into a computer. I could go back and get mine, Stella says. No need, Sybil says. Kanika should still be awake. She can lend us hers. You'd better come with us, Stella. I'm sure she'll be more willing to help a friend than her nosy mother. Nika, Sybil says, come on out. We could use a little help. What, Mom? Kanika says. Oh, hey, Stella. And Gretchen, who's a good potato and a stranger. What are you doing in my house? Hi, I'm just uh, Tabitha's cousin, Kanika asks. Yep, Stella says. Sybil says, sweetie, we were wondering if we could borrow your laptop. Stella and her friend have a video to show us. It's really important, Kanika, Stella says. Oh, okay. Kanika says, my room's a mess. Just bring it out there. Heads up, Kanika. Stella says, this is graphic. Duke got killed out in the woods tonight. It's on the rec it's on the recording. Kanika asks, are you serious? Duke's dead. We can watch this without... We can watch this without you, Stella says. You know I have a harder stomach than any of your friends. I'm pressing plate, Kanika says. Silence washes over the room as the video plays. Stella, what the hell is this? Kanika asks. Stella says, I'm sorry either of you had to see this, but Jessica and I have no idea how to make he heads or tails of it. Kanika asks, Stella, are you okay? Did you get hurt? I'm fine, really, I'm okay, Stella says. Poor Duke. Poor Bo. Has anyone told him yet? Nika asks. We talked to the police, Stella says. I hope they do, they told Bo. But Earl and Deputy Franklin didn't seem to be in much of a hurry to do anything. I'll call him later tonight, Sybil says. But for now, we have something far more serious to discuss. Whatever happened in the woods, I say, we weren't supposed to see any of that. You're not wrong, Sybil says. These things, my grandmother called them ditchlings. They are a terrible omen, a sign of great suffering and destruction to come. Kanika says, Mom, come on, whatever's... Doing this is a ser is serious. Stop scaring Stella and Jessica with this tail poke crap. Nika says, "A man just died. Have some respect." Sybil says, "Kanika, sweetie, let your mother talk." The creatures themselves are harmless to people, despite that grisly scene in the woods. How can you say that? Stella asks. Duke is dead. 
an unfortunate accident, and nothing more, Sybil says. Just as birds flock before a storm, the ditchlings congregate where a tragedy is soon to fall. To see one is to be cursed by fate. Jesus, Mom, Kanika says. They've clearly had a rough night. They don't need this, Stella says. It's okay, Kanika. This is helpful. Stella, whatever these things are, they aren't magic, Kanika says. Stella says, we can't rule that out, not after what we saw. But fine, let's focus on what we know. Whatever they are, they're doing something to these animals. You saw the chicken in our video. What was that growth? I saw something squirming around in that chicken, I say. Kanika says, maybe it's some sort of parasitic larval stage, part of their life cycle. But I don't want to jump to any conclusions, but something this out there, not without doing some research or talking to a biologist. Get it, girl. I'm sure there's a rational explanation that'll clear all of this up. Sybil says, oh dear, I'd clearly forgotten about the tea I'd put on. Let me fix a you a couple cups. It'll help soothe your nerves. Stella says, I don't know, it's getting late, and I should let Jessica get some rest. I ran her ragged today with all the hiking and running through the woods in terror. I can stay up, I say. This is important. Ha! <laughs> Okay, maybe it's that I'm eager to get home and start doing some research, Stella says. I'll ask around in my usual forums to see if anyone has information on ditchlings. Is that what you call them? Sybil says, that's right. You can go home now. Do try to get some rest. Don't stay up all night on the online. Let me get you some of my house-made peppermint tea to go. It really does wonders to soothe the soul. Bye, Stella, Kanika says. I'll see you tomorrow, and call me if you need to talk. Thanks, Kanika, Stella says. I s I'll see you. Bye, Jessica, Kanika says. It's excellent ice or warm, though with the nights getting chillier, warm will probably be best, Sybil says. Helps awake the, the bones. Be careful out there, both of you. Sybil turns and closes the door behind her. Alrighty, Stella says, let's head back home. My home, I mean. And here we are. You're welcome to stay the night if you want. I should probably head back and check on Tabitha, I say. That's sweet of you, Stella says. Are you sure you're okay heading back up the mountains alone? Sybil said the ditchlings are harmless. I think I'll be okay. It's not far, I say. Well, I won't stop you if you really want to go back. Here's my number. Call me when you get there, okay? And good luck. I'll see you tomorrow, Stella asks. Yeah, we're in this together, I say. Yeah, we are, Stella says. Stay safe, buddy. You begin the long hike back up to Scarlet Estate alone. Almost home. As you reach for the knob, the door swings open. Oh, fuck me. Tabitha says, Where the hell have you been? I 
called you back as soon as I had reception, I say. Did you? I didn't notice, Tabitha says. Do you know someone named Wayne, I ask? I have no idea what you're talking about, Tabitha says. I went into the woods with this girl I met to find some cryptids, and it ended with us watching a man die, I say. Ah, Tabitha says. So you met Stella, then. Ugh, that explains everything. She's gotten you all worked up. I'm going to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, you don't want to hang out? I'm still hyped up on adrenaline from tonight, I say. I would just love to hang out for a little while, cool down a bit. No, Tabitha says. I'm not going to hang out with you. It's late. I'm tired. I'm going to sleep. Don't do anything stupid while I'm asleep. Just go to your room and sleep. You're alone in the estate. The sound of the wind whistling through the house gives you an uneasy feeling in your gut. It's probably best to turn in and try to leave the night behind you. As you settle into your room, you remember that Stella asked you to call her once you got back. You pull out your phone and call. Stella says, Hey, how are you? Did you make it back? All good, I hear, I say. I'm gonna head to bed, I think. Good idea, Stella says. Get some Z's, okay? We'll talk tomorrow. From the relative safety of this uncomfortable bed, the events of the past evening seem like something that happened to someone else. Though you can still clearly picture the terror you felt in those moments. For now, you're safe and you're warm. Eventually, the sun will rise and chase away the monsters and make them seem like nothing but bad dreams. Maybe tomorrow, if you're lucky, you'll wake up in the normal world and have a boring week in the mountains with your sour-faced cousin. It's a nice thought, but deep down, you can't help but worry that things won't really get worse. Cool. Ooh.